Hey guys, welcome back to another video and greetings from Osaka. So today we are going to take a walk along this river here. Uh, this is some place that I just found on this trip and this leads to a very familiar place for most of you guys. Hello everybody, thanks for joining me on another walk. Yeah, I'm here in Osaka again. I thought I'd take a trip out here, a very short trip though. Uh, I went to Universal Studios uh, yesterday and I filmed uh, mostly food for my other channel. I will always travel for food. Um, yeah, if you, if you didn't know that I had another channel in addition to the Top Eats channel and this channel, check it out. Uh, you will not see my face, you'll not hear my voice though. It's uh, mostly um, shot with uh, no talking and text instead. A lot of people seem to like that style of video which is why I started that channel in the first place. But uh, do go check it out. Uh, that video will be coming out probably a month later. But um, anyway, check it out. Um, you might like the content I make over there. So yeah, this place I just discovered. I was uh, walking down from Dotonbori, that very popular place in Osaka where everyone goes to eat takoyaki and I discovered this nice little river walk. It's very local. I don't see any tourists here and I kind of like it. It's mostly residential apartments along the riverbank. There are some nice uh, eateries, you know, with terraces right over there. All apartment buildings over there. And that direction where we're heading to, um, that leads to Dotonbori area. Yeah. I'm not sure what this is here. It looks like some kind of auditorium or something. But anyway, yeah. Let's do this walk together on this beautiful day in Osaka. And the reason why I'm doing this walk is because not only is this area beautiful, but in between here and where we're headed to, um, I found this really artsy area. Anyway, I kind of like the area, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Oh, it's such a bright and sunny day today. The sun is shining directly in my face, but that's okay. Um, before we get started, I do have to say thank you to Boksu for sponsoring today's video. You guys already know that uh, we've been uh, trying out the snacks from Boksu for over a year and how much we love them, so I don't have to explain that to you. But for those of you that don't know, Boksu is a subscription service. They deliver premium authentic snacks to your doorstep. Every month they have a specific theme. Uh, last month it was Prefecture Passion. It gave you a taste of uh, snacks from 12 different prefectures. This month they are featuring Hokkaido snacks. Snacks and treats from Hokkaido are some of Satoshi and my favorite snacks. They do snacks and sweets really well in Hokkaido. So you guys don't want to miss this one. So I have two big news today. So number one is the giveaway that they're having. I mentioned it uh, uh, last month uh, to you. They are offering a chance to win free tickets to Japan. Since it is a holiday season, this is the perfect time to gift a Boksu subscription to anyone in your life who appreciates Japanese snacks and culture. Not only would you be gifting them Boksu, which is already great, but you'll also be gifting them the chance to win the free tickets to Japan anyone who is subscribed before December 31st is automatically entered. Also, from now until December 30th, you can receive your next Boksu in a special Kiribako wooden box for an additional $50. They are lovingly crafted in Koga City by Masuda Kiribako. I love this box. I'm going to be keeping this one for many, many years. It's so beautiful. I love it. I cannot believe that Boksu made a box so beautiful like this. Have you ever heard of a subscription service that does this? Never. So if you've ever wanted to try Boksu, this is the perfect time, guys. Give them a try. Make sure to use my code and link in the description to get you 10% off your subscription. Check out the link in the description for the terms and conditions as well as other methods of entry. So let's begin this walking tour, guys. So I was on this bridge uh, when I started this video. And this bridge goes across the river to the other side which is mainly residential, I believe. But uh, yeah, let, let me get down there. Down there first. 
it is um, almost um, no it's not almost December it's, it's a yeah it's, it's actually yeah it is almost December it's it's November uh, 18 today when I'm filming this that's something you got, uh, many of you guys ask when did you film this video well it is November 18 today and it is a pretty warm day it's 19 degrees out 19 degrees centigrade can you believe it and it's almost winter season so this is a beautiful bridge it's a pretty pretty bridge i think with all the plants hanging that apartment building must have a awesome view okay so let's go down here now don't worry guys you remember the last time i, I said if uh, this video is boring for you guys because it's a nature walk uh i promise the next one's going to be more exciting this one is going to be a little bit more exciting right now we're starting off very mild uh very calming hopefully hopefully my my voice calms you and um but we're going to end at an exciting part of tokyo uh, osaka i love that apartment too okay enough with my apartment fetish <laughs> it's not a fetish really I, I just like looking at houses and apartments okay so i did a little bit of research i don't know what this area is called but um this this uh, complex right here is pretty new uh, i believe there are some shops on the upper floor as well as a restaurant on the top but there's also a beautiful restaurant on the ground floor the river floor river level with outdoor seating and everyone's enjoying their meal right now outside it's beautiful i'd love to come here with satoshi one day and you can also take these river tours that they offer they offer a variety of river tours here uh like this you, this is the the jazz cruise and this is the aqua mini course 50 minutes five zero yeah you have a you have a uh, one two i know four 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 different cruises to choose from yeah oh hitty wait a minute sorry this is take free what's this here Right now, the, the, the city is kind of illuminated for Christmas but looks like other parts of the city is just as pretty. I should check it out. How beautiful. Okay, I'm going to take this with me. I'm here for a couple more days, so... Um, sorry. <laughs> Wrong way. Obviously, I'm not too familiar with this place. You know, on this trip, I decided to do something uh, yesterday for example I didn't film at all I decided to walk around uh, parts of the city that I'm unfamiliar with I, I keep going back to the familiar places and I thought that's not good Osaka's bigger than Namba and Umeda and Tennoji and there's other places that I can explore so I'm trying to do research and familiarizing myself with um, other local areas that way on my next trip i can i can make videos of those places okay wonder if i'll make it it's green right now shall i run i should huh i should run i made it yes okay so let's look back that is the bridge that we we were on we're actually gonna walk down here now down down the riverbanks over there and there's a reason why by the way if you go down that way that is namba station we're very near namba actually i walked from my uh, airbnb which is located in namba it's only about a 10 minute walk to here. Right in front of me 
At nighttime, it's prettier. You'll see a neon sign being illuminated. But that's the entrance to one of the, the entertainment districts. Uh, AKA like uh, where all the bars are. Bars and host bars and hostess bars. Okay. So we are going to step down to the riverbank here. And it looks like this area has illumination at nighttime. I think I'll come back here tonight later on to check out the, the illuminations. It's such a beautiful day, isn't it? So look at this, there's hardly any people here. But it's such a chill place. I am so happy that I discovered this place. Like you could sit here. Uh, yesterday when I when I came, um, there was a man sitting here eating a bento here along the riverbank and it's really nice that I believe that beautiful building is a love hotel. I believe so. And this bridge is actually quite charming as well. Ne. Yeah. Okay, so you guys see the artwork on the wall. Yeah. So this is kind of like an art walk. And I didn't even know this place existed because this is not in the guidebooks or anything. So this artist, his, uh, I guess his name is Baki Baki. He was born in 1978, Osaka. And his signature is the Baki pattern. Um, uh, it's based on Japan, in, on the Japanese ancient pattern. And uh, yeah, this is some of his artwork. So, let's see, can you see? So this is by Baki Baki. It's kind of cool, isn't it? I like it a lot. And then, this one is by another artist. This is by Grind Pencil and uh, his concept is between design and art. That's what it says. Uh, the explanation is right in front of the, the artwork that you see. And it says photography is permitted and, you, and share it on Instagram. Okay, I like this one too. This is really gorgeous what do you think i really like this one a lot this is by yo heavy and i believe all these artists are based in osaka and this guy got his influence from skate culture and yeah this is one of his artwork here i like this one too <laughs> this is cute this is by cab c-a-b Oh, this is, this is, oh, wow. He or she, I'm not sure if that's a man or a woman, is eating takoyaki on the horse. Yeah, so this is about this artist right here. And who's this person? Oh, this one. Uh, his, uh, his information got ripped off or it came apart or something. Too bad, but... I like this too. Okay. And there's a little cafe here. And even the last time I was here, I, I saw like a lot of cats. Hello. Hi. I noticed that, uh, that I encounter a lot of cats. Hello. Hi. Hi. Don't run away. Don't run away. Don't worry. Don't worry. Ah, you guys are cute. That was a beautiful cat. Beautiful cat. Look at this one. This is by an artist called TT Freak. TT Freak. Interesting. Oh, this is very peaceful. You can have a Colbit beef steak over there. 
you know, I was actually thinking of going to Kobe this time to eat some Kobe beef, but now I decided on Osaka. I wanted to go to uh, Super Nintendo World instead. I like this one too. This is by an artist called Whole Nine, right here. So, oh, okay. So this is a group. It's an, it's an artist unit composed of these two members here. So, interesting. I like it. They're so talented. This one, I don't know who the artist is. Yeah, there are no more profiles here. I guess you just uh, hashtag on Instagram and maybe you'll find these guys. And um, along this riverbank, I think some of these are residential buildings. Some of them are offices and others are uh, restaurants. Like this is a restaurant. I like this one too. This is Dotonbori River Walk by Masao. This is by an artist named Masao. I like this one because this is the riverbank we're walking along. We're gonna go to this area later. But look, instead of people, there are like takoyaki balls in the boat. And there's like elephants here. This is kind of cute. I, I like this. Ha, huh, this is nice too. It's like graffiti. Okay. This is by a calligrapher called Mami. Very nice. I like that. I, I, I like this one too. Look at this. I like this a lot. Hey, I like this too. I love street art. I really do. And there's more street art on the other side of the river. But today we're just going to stick to this side because I do want to take you guys to Dotonbori. Okay, let's take uh, one last look. Yeah, this whole wall is decorated with art made by local artists on this side as well as the other side of the riverbank. Very nice area to stroll along. And it's quiet. You know, you can get away from the noise of Dotonbori. But that's where we're headed right now. Because like I promised, I promised we're going to end with an exciting area. So I'm sure if you've been to Osaka, many of you guys are familiar with that thing over there. That yellow structure. That's where we're headed to. For the longest time, I didn't know there was a Don Quixote here. I've been to the Don Quixote on the other side. There's a Don Quixote there, but there's another one here. So if you go above ground here, um, you'll be on one of the main streets. But we're gonna walk under the bridge easier to get to the other side oh there's some blue lights on the ceiling it's kind of cool by the way when I go back to Tokyo uh, it's we have three days I think before we head to the northern part of Japan, specifically to Yonezawa city to have some Yonezawa beef and we'll be, we're going to be making a video for you guys from there. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be on Tabi Eats video. Tabi Eats channel, sorry. Okay. So we're pretty much in the Dotonbori area. 
you guys can hear right it's starting to get a little bit noisier that is a famous glico sign this area is famous for all these gigantic signboards and uh, things it, it, it's kind of insane but i love it it's very iconic osaka there you go that's the iconic glico sign at the end of this river walk river walk we will go upstairs So you see, there are a lot more people around here because this is the center of Dotonbori. It is more crowded above ground though. I think most people come to the riverbank to relax and stuff. So, you know what? Well, we'll walk all the way to uh, the Ferris wheel. I think uh, to let them take a picture. One moment, guys. I noticed that there are a lot more outdoor seating, just like Tokyo, you know, because of COVID. We didn't have all this outdoor seating before. Even, even there, there are outdoor seatings there, outdoor seating over there. I personally like outdoor dining, even before COVID. So this is great. So check it out. No, let, let me just go closer. Yeah, that's a Ferris wheel. It's a very uniquely designed Ferris wheel. And the building houses the other Don Quixote store I was talking about. I actually went there twice on this trip because I forgot toothbrush. And I'm staying in an Airbnb, so they didn't supply me with toothbrush or toothpaste, so, uh, which, which they don't usually anyway. So I decided to pick up some uh, toiletries here. It's a gigantic Don Quixote icon, that penguin. Yeah. But that is a Ferris wheel and it is moving right now. Would you guys ride that? I personally don't care much for Ferris wheels. So I've never been on it. But how about you guys? Does this appeal to you? Oh, and look, one of the, the, the boats are coming along the river. That's one of the, the river cruises. You guys having fun? You guys having fun? So that's something to do in Osaka. I've never done that though. Looks kind of fun. I don't think I'll get seasick on that. <laughs> All right, so we are going to walk up. We're gonna go up on the main street level. And then that's where we'll end this video, okay? Guys, I do have to thank you guys for watching that super long video I made in Mitake Valley. I do hope you guys enjoyed that and I, I hope you guys didn't find it too long. It was a risk. It was a risk, but I wanted to make you guys feel like you were on that walk with us. So I hope, I hope that wasn't a boring one. I hope that was enjoyable for you guys. And I also have to thank you moderators because, you know, I mean, that's a long video and you guys have to stay on the video for over an hour. So thank you. I'm sorry, but thank you. So we are on the main street level of Dotonbori and everywhere you look, they have takoyaki stores. Look at this, this gigantic line for takoyaki here. It's like a little old fashioned game. This is a very famous place to eat ramen. Probably the, the most popular ramen shop in Osaka, Kindu. And you can eat right out here. 
right here. It's it's pretty good. So I am happy to report that people are back. Yeah, people are out and about. There are a lot of tourists, uh, meaning domestic tourists, you know, from other parts of Japan. Look at this, all, all these lines are for takoyaki places. And so this is good to see. Business is coming back. Uh, this is uh, the crowds without any international tourists. So imagine when the international tourists come back. Oh, this place is amazing for udon. This place has good kushikatsu, which is another um, Osaka specialty. Basically, deep fried food on skewers. Here's another uh, Gleeko sign that you can take a picture in front of. Everyone's enjoying their holiday here. The takoyaki stand there is also popular. The last time I was here, which was about a year ago, I was the only customer at this takoyaki stand. The only one, and now there is a massive line. Yeah, this takoyaki stand, what, what makes this place stand, stand apart from the others is that they have a crispy, they have some crispy bits in their takoyaki balls. Yeah, so you have like this texture that you don't find in other takoyaki. You know, I'm not yet quite used to walking in crowds. So, you, you probably notice I'm walking very slowly. And you have your souvenir shops. I'm very happy to see all these people because I was worried the last time I was here about what was going to happen to these stores. Now, there are some stores that have closed. So that's unfortunate, but I think it's the same everywhere. Like this gigantic building here, there are no tenants inside at the moment. But I believe this store was geared towards the tourists, the, the foreign tourists, which is why, you know, it's empty. Oh, and another thing, this is something um, my sister talked about. In Japan, we have this thing called morning service. And basically you pay for the price of your drink and then you can get like a, a very light breakfast. Uh, this place offers toast with butter and a boiled egg. Yeah, and it starts from 385 yen for your breakfast. It's a good deal. Great if you, you're not particularly a heavy breakfast eater. And this is Kanidoraku. This place has been here ever since, like forever. You know, when I lived here in Osaka when I was 17 years old, this was here and I used to always come to buy the sushi here. Prices have risen, obviously, but yeah, this place uh, specializes in crab. Amazing crab sushi. Oh my God. And then there's a line for the grilled crab. That's good to see as well. Because last time I was here, once again, uh, I was the only customer. And then here, this, here we are going on the bridge. I have to say, this is probably the most popular uh, spot for tourists who come to Osaka, I think. Everybody wants to take a picture in front of uh, the Gliko sign. See, everyone's taking photos in front of the Guriko sign. That's the Ferris wheel. And if you go straight down here, that's Shinsaibashi. This is the beginning of Shinsaibashi, which is uh, one of the main shopping districts of Osaka. And that's the sign there. That's the, the Guriko sign. Yeah, this is popular because this Guriko sign uh, it went to it went through uh, many uh, transformations, but uh, it was here since 
before I was born. So it's quite historical. And then if you go down this street, you enter Ebisubashi Street. Wow, it's so crowded. And this leads to Namba. Oh my goodness. Have you guys watched that Arcane League of Legends? It's on Netflix. Thinking of watching that looks kind of interesting. Okay, so I could go down this street, but it's like super crowded, so I'm not gonna go down this street right now. We'll turn here. There's another very, very popular takoyaki stand here with, of course, a line of people. This is a theater. Ah, it's been here for a very long time as well. Housed in this very beautiful historical building. Uh, currently, they are playing uh, these shows here. Yeah. Hey, look, um, they, they've just celebrated their 100th anniversary. Or they're going to, 2022, and it makes 100 years since this building was built. What a beautiful building. And this is a very popular takoyaki stand. I personally don't love the takoyaki from here, but a lot of people like it. And last time I was here, uh, I introduced this place to you guys. Even in the Tabi East video, we featured the egg tarts from here, Andrew's Egg Tarts. I believe Andrew's Egg, egg Tarts, Lord Stoll's Bakery. I believe this is from Macau. It's the original store from Macau, but I swear the best egg tarts I've had in my entire life. And this uh, building right here, this traditional Japanese building, uh, this is the first time I had sukiyaki in Osaka when I was 18. This guy took me here and he treated me. It was very expensive for me back then, but it was the first time I had like a proper uh, high-end sukiyaki where, where the staff makes the food for you and it was delicious. Let's see how much it is now. You know, it's not that expensive now looking at it. The sukiyaki course is 7,700 yen per person. Well, starting at 7,700 yen. So it's not cheap, but it's cheaper than, for example, some sukiyaki places in Tokyo. And of course, because of the pandemic, they do have takeout now. Their, their bentos are a little bit more pricier than the ones you buy at the convenience stores. This is 2970, so about 26 US dollars. But they do have wagyu, they do have uh, Japanese beef inside, so yeah. You, you can buy like a raw beef if you want. You can buy three uh, pieces of steak for 16,200 yen. So that's like $150. Okay, and we are on one of the main streets. And if we go that way, that's Namba on that side. And that's where I'm staying this time. I'm staying in an Airbnb. But anyway. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna keep this video not too long. I don't wanna make every video an hour long, but I truly hope uh, you enjoyed this one. Uh, thank you so much for coming along this walk with me. I'm having a great time here. Um, I am going to go to Nagoya after this uh, just for a couple of days and, and hopefully I can make some videos there before I return to Tokyo. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye everybody! Hey and look, here's another smaller branch of Kinyu Ramen. Actually there's, I think there are several branches of this uh, ramen chain but the most popular one is the one on Dotonbori. 